They will forever be legends in Las Vegas. Magicians Siegfried and Roy have left their mark on this town, although both the gentlemen have passed. Their legend lives on throughout the town. So many memories, so many people watching right now that saw them and their magical tigers on stage. Well, two days ago, they launched a very fascinating new podcast on Apple. It is called Wild Things, Siegfried and Roy's uh, podcast. It's all about their story is what it is, Sean. Mm -hmm. Got to tune in and listen. Yeah, and it's gonna be a great listen for anyone that wants to know about this amazing history between these two. And joining us now, the man behind it all, he is an Emmy award-winning filmmaker, Stephen Leckhart. He is also the man behind this podcast. It's great to talk to you, my friend. How are you? I'm good, thanks for having me. Uh, you've uh, you've had uh, other podcasts before uh, for Muhammad Ali and the Challenger. This uh, is uh, putting the focus on Siegfried and Roy. What made you, first of all, decide to choose these two characters to tell their story? Well, I'm a child of the '80s, right? So they always loomed large. Yeah. Um, oh, my yeah. parents went, and my parents got to see them in person. And I remember I didn't get to go because I was at summer camp. Um, so I always wanted <laughs> to see them. I always wanted to see the show because it sounded amazing, and they were just pop culture icons. But I never got to see it. And then in 2003, when obviously the the attack happened on Roy on stage, and the show shut down. Not only did I miss my chance, but a big question kind of popped into my brain, which was just like, what happened? And I never felt like we got a suitable answer. So with this podcast, uh, we set out to answer that question and many, many more questions. Well, Stephen, I listened to the first episode and you are truly an investigative journalist because you dive very deep. It, it's not a sensational look at Siegfried and Roy. This is not, it's not gossip hour at all. It's really diving in uh, in the first episode to their their history as an act, how they met, a little about their family backgrounds. Um, there's so much I could bring up with you, but maybe for the Las Vegas audience, you could t share something that people don't know or might not know about Siegfried or Roy. Yeah, so I mean, I, I knew they were from Germany. I think most people do because you could just hear their accents. But um, unless you really did research or uh, talk to people or, or, or knew them, you didn't really know where they came from in Germany and you didn't know much about their childhoods. And I was sort of shocked to learn that both of their fathers were in the German military and they grew up in kind of the, the sort of rubble of Nazi Germany after all the bombings and sort of post-World War II. And they had very traumatic childhoods. They lived in abusive homes. They had really challenging relationships with their fathers. And I think that uh, increased the bond that they had with each other. But I, I never knew that until now. Wow, really interesting. And, and, uh, creating this podcast and being able to tell the story, especially in the middle of a pandemic. I mean, tell us how, how you approached putting, uh, putting this together and, and, and doing it justice. Well, so I'm the only person that was in Los Angeles. Our entire team at At Will Media was based in New York City. Um, and it was actually this making a podcast is one of the things that you can do remotely pretty easily because we did most of our interviews either over the phone or Zoom. Um, and because of the pandemic, you know, you didn't have to go into anyone's home. My last film that I did, uh, which is about the Challenger space shuttle, we traveled all over the country with cameras and sat in people's living rooms. And yeah. To not be able to do that, uh, the you know, because of the pandemic, it was very pragmatic to lean into a podcast where you could just beam into somebody's eardrums, uh, you know, over the interwebs. Um, so the the process was real simple. We spent many months just sort of finding people and tracking down uh, subjects and characters that sort of touch every aspect of their life and career. Uh, and I think we interviewed close to forty different people, wow. and there's thirty one voices wow. in the show. Wow. It's just so awesome. Made a little easier by the uh, little room that you're in. That's actually a detached office. And Sean and I, before the interview, were jealous. a little bit jealous that you weren't in the house with your, your spouse and kids like like we have been. So, you know, you do have an advantage there. Um, I, I would like to touch on some of those 31 voices that, that are in the podcast, because I was really intrigued about who's going to participate. You really went into the background. Um, one of the main characters we hear from, main people we hear from in the first episode was actually um, kind of an animal advocate or um, an animal regulator. Could you tell us a little bit about that person and maybe a little bit more about the animal angle on this whole thing? Because I think a lot of people care a lot about the tigers. 
Yeah, well, I think it's important to put out there that um, everyone I talked to that knew Siegfried and Roy said that they cared for their animals incredibly well, and that Roy especially had a very remarkable bond with, with the animals. And so I don't think you can take that away from them. But for years, obviously, PETA was protesting the use of animals, uh, you know, on stage, not just Siegfried and Roy, but all performers. And yeah. I think, you know, we, we felt that Siegfried and Roy is very much a snapshot in time. You know, they built their act in the 1960s, got famous into the 70s and 80s and sort of hit the apex of their career post in throughout the 90s. Right. And over the last 44, 50 years, we our our attitudes towards animals and entertainment have changed dramatically, right? Hollywood yeah. movies have started C using CGI animals, and so despite the fact we do interview people that were very critical of how they you know treated their animals and just that they had animals on stage, it is worth noting. I think it's reflective of the times. Um, but the gentleman you allude to, uh, I think, is the is the fellow who was an investigator at the USDA. Um, yes. And that is something. So the podcast is called Wild Things because every episode we just reveal more and more wild and shocking details. And I had no idea. But in 2003, when the tiger attack happened, the USDA actually sent out one of their private investigators to go undercover and start working to uncover whatever details he could about what had happened. Hmm. And he got tasked to work the case like an actual detective. Wow. Very interesting. Man, this is going to be a great listen for anyone that loves really podcasts. Really cool, Stephen. You're going to want to check this out. Stephen, congratulations on all your success, and we're looking forward to hearing uh, more episodes as they get released. Thank you. All right, take and care. Download yourself. it. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Put it on your phone. Sure. Yeah. JJ has it in her hands right now. The podcast yeah. is called Wild Thing, Siegfried and Roy. Get it on Apple Podcasts. Check it out for yourself. It's going to be a very captivating listen.